So Apple just released iOS 16.1 beta 4 to all iPhones and developers, and they also released iPadOS 16.1 beta 5 or iPadOS 16 beta 11, depending on which naming moniker you're going with. And in this video, we're gonna actually combine iPadOS and iOS because we're getting so close to that RC edition that the changes are very minor. So we're gonna talk about what's new, talk about battery life and performance of each of them. And on the iPad side, we're gonna see that secondary monitor support made a comeback because again, iPadOS with 16.1 beta 4 brought stage manager to more iPads, which was a great thing overall, but they got rid of secondary monitor support on all the M1 iPads, which is, again, the number one thing that we all wanted from iPadOS 16. But without further ado, let's see what Apple did with 16.1 beta 4 and iPadOS 16.1 beta 5. Let's talk about it. So let's get right into this video, everybody. The first thing we wanna look at is how big each of these builds were. So first, let's start off with iOS 16.1 beta 4. You're looking at about 670 megabytes, so give yourself about 1 to 1.5 gigs of open storage to get this installed and get it installed correctly. And then I also took a screenshot of iPadOS. And as you can see with iPadOS, we're actually dealing with iPadOS 16 developer beta 11, which is a little bit weird because when you go into the actual build number, and I'll show you guys in a little bit with iPad behind me, it actually shows iPadOS 16.1, which is very, very interesting. But with iPadOS, regardless, it is about 340 megabytes. So give yourself, you know, probably a gig of space in order to get this installed and get it installed correctly. And then the next thing we're gonna do is actually look at the build number. So if we go into settings, let's get out of this focus mode right here. Let's go into general, go into the about section, go to iOS version, and you can see that we're on iOS 16.120B5064 lowercase c. So that means we're getting closer and closer to that RC edition and then finally to that public release which ideally should come in the middle of October for both iPadOS and iOS. So again, since we're getting so close to the public release of iOS 16.1 and iPadOS 16.1, this is mostly gonna be performance issues and bug fixes, making sure that everything is running smoothly in the background, to make sure there's little hiccups, if any, and Apple can avoid something like that we got with 16.0, which was that battery drain issue and the overheating of the iPhones. So Apple is taking strides to make this experience a little bit better, but some of the things that did start to work again were in shortcuts, for instance, if you go into shortcuts, something was actually wrong with automations. I don't really use automations too, too much, but if you go into your automation section, and now when you create an automation, it'll actually run. Previously, in the last 16.1 betas, and also on iPadOS, automations were not working. You could set them up, you could get them going, but once you initiated an automation, it actually would not go all the way through. Another interesting one is if we go back into the settings, Apple actually removed the ability to manage your matter accessories. So actually with the last beta update on both iPadOS and iOS, in your general settings around here, I believe, you actually got an option for matter accessories and Apple has actually removed that totally from this beta four and beta five update, you know, for each of these corresponding devices. Why they got rid of it, I'm not 100% sure because we are actually very, very close for matter accessories to actually hit the shelves. They're saying around November timeframe is when the first products and matter capable accessories were gonna be viable. And basically what matter is, is a new universal norm and universal standard that everybody's gonna have to abide by, especially if you wanna be involved with HomeKit. So even companies like Google and Nest will be adopting matter accessories, which will allow us to use it with HomeKit. And for me, that's actually perfect because I've been slowly transitioning away from Google Home and into HomeKit. Another quick one, which I did wanna show off was actually in the settings. If you go down to display and brightness and go down to where it says the view, nothing really functionally different, just something to actually take note of. If you go into the last beta update, that wallpaper before was actually showing the iOS 15 wallpaper, but now you can see that it is showing iOS 16. So that's something that was added in there. And then what I do wanna show off is actually on the iPad itself. So let's move over to the iPad. And just with a quick glance here, you can see that we're actually still with that weird stage manager and secondary monitor support. Like we said in the last beta update, Apple completely got rid of secondary monitor support. And this is what we're dealing with again. So we're back to the mirroring display. There's nothing you can do in the settings. Even if you go into general, and I like to go into display and brightness, scroll down into stage manager. And normally I can click on this little iPad section right here and it'll actually show me some other monitors that I'm using. But again, it's not letting me do that because they got rid of the actual secondary monitor support. And if I go into display and brightness, they did add the ability to see your connected display. You can change it from SDR to HDR, allow display mode changes, because again, this is a 4K monitor with HDR capabilities. So being able to take advantage of that will be nice. One thing I will say from a performance standpoint on the iPad, 
since they got rid of it, obviously they're not doing anything new really at this point, but it is very, very stable if that's, you know, the silver lining at least. But if you open up something like LumaFusion and then you grab the files app over here and you start moving stuff over, again, I can move over here and use the inertia, grab Twitter, go back over here, keep going, pull up the photos application. So you can see that everything is moving relatively quickly and very, very fluidly from a performance standpoint. It just absolutely stinks that Apple got rid of that secondary monitor support, but it had to be for a reason. And the reason was that it was never at any point fully stable and fully you know, recommendable for lack of a better term. So if you guys do wanna try out iPadOS 16.1 and play with Stage Manager, because it is available now on every iPad Pro from 2018 and higher, unfortunately, iPad Airs will not be able to take advantage of this unless you have the M1 iPad Air, because again, only the A12X, A12Z chips have enough GPU cores in order to take advantage of Stage Manager. So that's something to take note of if you guys do wanna try it out. And again, from a performance standpoint, we're doing great. Let's go into battery life real quick. And we're gonna talk about battery life for the iPad Pro. So if we go into battery, let it load up, go to the last 10 days. We're doing about two hours of average screen on time, but let's go on a day like Wednesday. We got three hours and 20 minutes of screen on time. And guess what? We only took up 25% battery. So on a day like this, where it's mostly Safari and YouTube and photos, we get a lot of screen time. So this day right here, three hours and five minutes, a big LumaFusion day, you see that it took up about 50% battery. So we could have edited for six hours on LumaFusion, which is great to see. So these are the kinds of things that I like to look at when it comes to battery life. And overall, we are improving little by little. And now let's check the battery life on the iPhone 14 Pro Max. So with the 14 Pro Max, if we go into settings, let's go into our battery section just to see what we've been dealing with over here. So go battery let it do its thing, go to the last 10 days. And you can see we're doing about four hours and six minutes of screen on time overall. But if you're going to do like Sunday, we had eight hours and a day like, what is this, Thursday, where we had seven hours and 33 minutes of screen on time, seven and a half hours of screen idle time with still less than 100%, eight hours on this day. So overall, we're not doing too, too bad from a battery life perspective. I haven't really pushed it to those 10 hours, 12 hours of battery life days, but overall, battery life after we moved on from 16.0 battery life was actually really really good and the last little update that i did want to show off if you guys look at the dynamic island and you go into a screen that's actually a little bit darker so if i go into my lock screen you can see that at the correct light there's a little bit of a software outline on the actual display in the dynamic island itself it's hard to show right now but there is a little bit of a gray outline when using the dynamic island and you have a dark wallpaper why apple's doing that i don't really know but that's pretty much all we have new with iPadOS and iOS. Let's finish up this video and get out of this view. And that is pretty much gonna do it for this video, everybody. Like you saw, there weren't too many changes and we are getting closer and closer to that RC edition and to that final release to the entire public of 16.1, both on the iOS and on the iPadOS side. Now, I'm still not sure if Stage Manager is going to make it or at least secondary monitor support on all iPads or M1 iPads is gonna make it for the 16.1 release. It's looking more so that it's not gonna happen and Apple's just gonna release it at a later date with a 16.2, 0.3, or even a 0.4 update. Because again, Apple does like to give us one more outstanding feature kind of mid-cycle and mid-year and they might save that secondary monitor support for the M1 iPads or they might release it alongside some sort of M2 iPad Pro, which I'm still hoping for and crossing my fingers for. But that's gonna do it for this video. Leave a little dolphin if you guys made it to the end in the comments down below, just so I know that you made it to the end. And also let me know in the comments down below, are you guys in the beta program? Did you update to 16.1? Or are you still in the public versions of 16.0 and you're still waiting for 16.1 on the iPadOS side? Because again, having Stage Manager on more devices is a good thing. Just getting rid of secondary monitor support and then not even shipping the new Freeform feature and the collaboration feature, which was supposed to come with 16.0 with iPadOS. Those are all big misses in my book. But that's gonna do it for this video. If you guys wanna watch more iOS, iPadOS, iPhone or iPad content, click on one of these videos right here and definitely say subscribe because we've got some good videos coming out soon. But until next time, I'm Fernando, and I'm out of here.